So you're gonna get a house here in this spot and from a factory in less than 24 hours. Say what? Basically you can have a house like delivered to you in no time flat. By the time it gets there, you could go out to lunch and have your house built for you. You're gonna be learning more about Boxable and how they are able to do this and how incredibly cost-effective it is. So what kind of homes are these? I mean, we know of the traditional stick-built homes and we know about manufactured homes and we know about modular homes. But what the heck do these fall under? Because they travel on the road and I don't know, I'll have them explain it to you. These things read like stereo instructions. The way we look at stick building, it's kind of like a pre-industrial solution, a pre-factory solution. So it's really the most inefficient way to do things is one at a time out in, in the field using hand tools. Um, you know, it's dangerous and slow. And one of the reasons uh, factory building hasn't taken over housing is because of the size. And mm -hmm. we think we've solved that. So hopefully we can move into a, a post-industrial age of, of con building construction that is, you know, uh, uh, faster and, and lower cost and uh, more, more efficient and uses factories and automation. And what we're building is going to be modular certified. HUD okay. is a national code requirement of HUD is that you have a, some kind of trailer system, wheel system on it. Oh, so okay. it would be nice to get that certification as well for, mm -hmm. for our units, but I'm not sure if we're going to be able to because we don't have this trailer chassis on it. I've talked a little bit to them about that. Um, but right now they will be certified as modular buildings. So we go state by state and get that modular approval. Mm -hmm. And then that basically means all the inspections are done in the factory. It makes things a little bit easier uh, for the builder, but they're built to the same or higher standards as uh, regular stick built. Uh, traditional financing is uh, no problem. Uh, whereas HUD, there's a lot of stigma with manufactured homes and there's supposedly a lower quality to them and things like that. All that sounds well and good, but everybody knows that shipping on anything is super expensive. And if anybody's ever driven down the road and seen a double wide or even a modular home going down the road, they take up about half the road and clog up traffic. And why they decide to do those at five o'clock in the afternoon in the middle of traffic, it makes no sense to me, but I don't make the rules. First thing is, if you can't ship affordably, it's hard to build in a factory. So the, the cost right. of shipping these oversized loads is very high. And it means that modular in a lot of cases is more expensive than stick built, which mm -hmm. is unfortunate because it's better to build in a factory. So uh, once we dialed in that, that shipping problem, uh, now we can ship totally highway legal loads. Mm -hmm. um, we're shipping uh, two to three times more square footage per load on top of being highway legal. Uh, and we don't need the, the follow cars, the extra permitting, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Almost all new construction comes with drywall. And if you're gonna be shipping a house, of course, the drywall is gonna crack. But they've addressed that problem too. We don't have that issue because our entire wall is like, for example, just one wall, it's all laminated in one single piece. So it's not nailed together with loose pieces of wood and little pieces of drywall that shift against each other. It all goes back to the strength and the way we're building the walls. Uh, that was one of the early tests we did um, was a type of like wall bending test that they do for wind ratings. Uh -huh. And we are easily gonna surpass the requirements to be in Miami area, which is the strictest wind loading uh -huh. uh, conditions in the country. Right. Uh, so we're super excited about uh, when all this testing comes in, we haven't finished all of it yet, but we know kind of have a good idea of what the results are going to be, mm -hmm. um, to be able to showcase all these test results, wind ratings, you know, all this different stuff to show how strong this product's going to be. So anytime you're in new construction, you'll notice that anywhere there is wet areas, they'll have a different type of drywall where the sinks will be, or the toilets will be, or the shower will be, or the tub will be. And that's because this is what they call a cement board and it's mold resistant. And Boxable found that out and that's why they put that in their homes. I'm gonna go ahead and have them explain it to you. Is it the same cement board that they use in showers? Uh, it's not, it's called magnesium oxide board. I think that some companies do market it for bathroom use. We could use sheetrock if we wanted to, but we thought we came across this stuff and it just seemed to have so many benefits to it. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't, you know, off gas, it, it doesn't grow mold, it's water resistant, uh, it's very strong. 
So how are they gonna put this all together? Like, what happens when it ends up at the home site? Is there a bunch of builders there that are connecting all these pieces together? I don't know. We build them in the factory, mm -hmm. everything's finished. They actually fold up to, for, from a width of 20 feet down to eight and a half feet. Eight and a half feet is the magic number to dramatically lower the shipping costs. Then they arrive on site. Um, you take them off the trailer in a number of ways. Um, and basically it just unfolds. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it only took about an hour to unfold each one. It's really, you unfold it and you're done. I mean, the, if you were gonna buy one of these, you would interface with a general contractor who would help you get the permits. They mm -hmm. would set up your site. You need to build some kind of foundation. Uh, you need to have electric water ready. And then the unit just shows up, unfolds, plugs in, and you're good to go. But what about cabinets and bathtubs and showers and stairs? According to Boxable, all you need is your couch and your kitchen supplies. I'm gonna ask them how they do that. Even though the unit folds down to eight and a half wide, it uh -huh. still has five feet of space that's uncompressed. Okay. So uh, within that five feet by the length of the unit, whether it's a 20 foot ones that we have now or up to 60 feet, uh, we can house things in there like bathroom, kitchen, uh, staircase, fireplace, uh, anything that needs to be done in the factory. Um, another cool application where it's uh, disaster relief. So we think that, oh. you know, in the event of a disaster, we will have these off-grid versions built and ready, inventoried, and then they will be deployed um, to provide immediate shelter uh, after the disaster. And then the cool thing is, uh, once people start moving back and rebuilding their communities, they can actually take the room modules, bring them back to their, their let's say it's a demolished building site, and use it to rebuild their house. So then instead of having, you know, FEMA having thousands of junked uh, tra trailers, RVs, they'll be able to repurpose these and rebuild their communities with them. So what's the outside of these things gonna look like? Cause I don't know about you, I like a house like this. I like brick and I like a nice porch. How are they gonna make it look more personal and less like a box? So uh, right now it's uh, just a steel skin. Um, so it just kind of looks like a flat wall. You can't really tell what the material is and, or, or what's going on there. Mm -hmm. And it looks nice like that. Um, we wanted to create uh, kind of an architecturally neutral building block. Mm -hmm. And then anything else, you, if you really want to make it look pretty or maybe match something else, you just, you just add it on in the field. You know, for example, out here in Vegas, we have these big tract home communities. Probably, you know, let's say there's 200 houses, but there's only three house models. But you can't really notice that when you drive in because they're all decorated a little differently. One has a stone facade, one has a, a siding facade. Right. So that stuff is just a little bit of gingerbread that you, that you add on after, and it makes a, a big difference uh, visually. And what we're building is this architecturally neutral, universal building block. So I need to know what kind of roof we're gonna be looking at here. Are we gonna be having ones like this, or is it gonna be flat, or is it gonna have tiles? I need to know what the roof's gonna look like. Roof right now, we have a flat roof system. Mm -hmm. So it's like a snow load rated, insulated flat roof system. Mm -hmm. And um, that's fine for a lot of climates, but not all of them. Some places require a more pitched roof, like where they have really high snow loads and, and things. Well, you have a yeah. high pitched roof here. It's just, that's yeah. what they require. We have so yeah. much rain. Exactly, exactly. In some areas that's normal and it would be weird to not have a, a pitched roof. So mm -hmm. that's something that you're gonna have to add in the field. And, um, but again, we've kind of lowered the, the burden for that because the insulation's already done. Mm -hmm. So really it would just be for the, the snow. Aesthetic. And, yeah, and aesthetics, yeah. Now I want your opinion. What do you think? Do you think that this is gonna stay? Do you think that traditional building is going to be the wave of the future or is this archaic? Do you think this new boxable idea is the solution to problems? Or do you think it's 3D printing? 3D printing's cool, but there's a few problems with it. And in my opinion, uh, it doesn't bring everything into the factory. So you're still stuck, stuck on site, finishing things on site, which is not really an efficient way to go. You can get the, the walls up with a concrete shell 3D printing, but then everything else is just traditional construction again. So 
we're kind of back at square one. Getting interested? I'm sure you're just like me. When are they going to be ready to buy and ship? We should be setting up our production facility later this year. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully we'll be in production sometime, full production sometime next year. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and as we move forward and scale the company, I think we're going to be able to bring the price down and down. And that's the goal of this company is to lower you know, housing costs for everyone. So right now we're just planning to go out with this initial Casita module. They're all going to be the same. But down the line, the plan is to have kind of like an, an online configurator mm -hmm. where you stack and arrange and connect different module sizes and add on exterior finishings to make it look, you know, the style that you want. And we'll uh, hopefully roll that out, you know, in the next few years. And mm -hmm. it will be just a little 3D tool that people uh, customize their home with online. And that's kind of, you know, going to be the secret to, to our um, factory production is that if we're in the factory, we don't want to be doing custom work because that slows us down. Mm -hmm. So by building this system, we'll build the same, you know, kitchens, kitchen room module over and over again. We'll build the same two bedroom room module over and over again. Mm -hmm. And then the customization happens when you take those units and, and stack and connect them. So we hope that we'll be able to really lower the cost by doing streamlined factory production where we're building the same widget over and over again and still allow homeowners and builders to have what they want, which is a custom home. So um, the first room module is our smallest. It's mm -hmm. 20 by 20, roughly. So mm -hmm. the interior dimensions are about 375 feet. Um, this is the smallest unit in our system, and we mm -hmm. fitted it out as a little studio apartment. So it's got a, a bathroom, kitchen, couch, uh, and a bed in it. You know, it's a, it's a really great space. We, we debuted it at the uh, Builder Show in Las Vegas mm -hmm. uh, just a couple of weeks ago and got an, an amazing reception. What I would say is recommend for people to go to our website, boxable.com slash reserve and add their name to the wait list. We're asking for a $100 uh, fully refundable anytime deposit to kind of hold your place in line. Uh, because we've gotten so much interest in this um, that we think when we are online in our first year, uh, we think it's, it's all going to be spoken for. And the burning question on everybody's mind, how much is it? Our planned price is 50000 delivered to the surrounding states here of mm -hmm. Nevada. And that includes everything except the bed and the uh, couch. So washer, dryer, fridge, uh, everything. I'm totally interested when it comes to new ways of constructing homes, but I want to know your opinion. Do you think traditional home building is going to be the way it goes for the next 20, 30, 50 years? Or do you think that modular homes are going to be the wave of the future? Or even manufactured homes? If you want to know more about manufactured homes, go ahead and click this video right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this because you matter.